Okay, welcome back everyone. This is Daniel and uh, I have decided to pass the torch along to Mike Howerton because he did such a great job with us. I think, I think it was a good audition. Uh, and uh, he's going to be joined by his uh, dear friend J.R. Burkhart. And uh, we're looking forward to this because I just I heard him say one thing and I said, this guy's got a good face for radio. So uh, please enjoy this. I'm going to be keeping score. You guys are in for a hell of a match right now. And I'm really happy to announce that Brandon Schuff is still doing very well in this tournament. Uh, I've always had high hopes for Brandon Schuff. And, uh, and he still remains. He didn't do t very well in the West Coast uh, Challenge up in Fremont. And so uh, I'm really happy that he's still in this match. And he's also playing with, in, in this tournament, and he's also playing with Torsten Homan. And this is a one-loss side match, if I'm not mistaken. Or is it a winner side match? Is this winner side? One loss side. Oh. So, with that, I'm going to hand this over to J.R. Burkhart and uh, Mike Howerton. You guys enjoy this, and let's thank our sponsors, West State Billiards, JB Cases, and uh, Big Time Threads. And remember, we still have the Q Maker Showcase going on. You can come and check it out at Freezer's Ice House. So, take it away, guys. <laughs> after you, Mr. Howerton. Oh, after me. Did you play? I did not play. I had to work, unfortunately. So, my uh, choices were to play in this and miss Vegas, or go to Vegas and just come and spectate. So, the decision was fairly easy, but... Uh, it's been choice. a lot of fantastic pools so far this weekend. What's yeah, we joke, you know, back and forth, but you know, you're. I, I'm not saying that you're jumping up to gamble with Toasty here, but <laughs> you're one of the top players in the state, whether you believe in it or not. Um, if the state was shrunken down to Apache Junction, mm -hmm. then you may be correct. <laughs> Wick Wickenburg, perhaps. Are you playing anything other than league? Uh, no, I work six days a week, so I really don't have much time. You know, I get out on Mondays and play here league, and then Wednesday nights at a, another place here in town. So those are my two nights, basically, to play, and I get out occasionally on the weekends, try and find some trouble. There are many pool players who've had their career ended by a job. By a job? Yeah. Or a woman. Or a woman, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. If you can stay away from both of them, you can be a pro pool player. Exactly. Who do you uh, who do you who do you favor here in this match? Well, Brandon's obviously playing real good to be where he is, but <coughs> I'm I'm not supposed to take favorites. I've been a fan of Torstens for a long time. I think he's one of the one of the best. I think he has. As far as the character, and I don't mean a character like Keith. I mean, I just think he has <laughs> the best character of of just about anybody in the game. I've told him for multiple years now that I thought if a pool player was going to run the WPA, it should be him. Um, you know, that's that's high praise, but I think he's deserving of it. You know, I've, I've never seen him talk negatively towards somebody. He loses a match, he wins a match, he's the same. He just... He looks at himself as an athlete and as a professional, and that's the way he lives his life in this game. And we are off. One ball? No. And just real quick to follow up on what you said, uh, the first time I watched uh, Toasty play live was 09 in Vegas, and uh, since then, every single time I've ever watched him play, good, bad, or indifferent, he always handles it with class, and uh, that's one of the first things I uh, I noticed about him. In addition to the you know the fundamentals and and, and the game that he's got, 
you know, there's a lot of great players out there, but to find a world-class player with a world-class attitude, um, they don't grow on trees. I completely agree with you. Is there a, a window to make the four here? It's tough from where we're sitting. I think so, but I think he's got to get just dead perfect. He's not going to play the three off the four. No. Well, maybe. That would be perfect if he plays it off the four. He said, Mr. Howerton, I will take that challenge. <laughs> now the question is, how do you control the four after you bump it? Did he run just a hair by the three? He did. He, I think he wanted to be a little more straight or on this side of it, because now he's going to be going away from... Once he pockets the four, or, I mean, is he looking at maybe squeezing the three past? Well, but if he does, then I don't know what he's going to do with the four. Yeah, he's got to be going straight four here, right? How do you control the four? You do it like that. Nice shot. And that's why he's up there playing, and I'm sitting here watching and commentating. Oh, come on, with a legend, that? with a legend in the industry, Mr. Yeah. Howerton. You shoot that ball one-handed. Come Give me on, a break. Mr. Howerton's forgotten more about pool than I will ever know. <laughs> I don't know about all that. I might have watched more pool than you. <laughs> yeah, you're frequent uh, watcher, Miles. I think you're probably at a million hours. <laughs> There's no reason to not be out here. Shelf has come so close uh, in various pro events. It just seems like he's like uh, James Aranis, who was on the stream earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been over here in the states for a number of months, and he had so many second and third place finishes. He finally broke through and won a big one, and now he's winning everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, you just wonder what Shelf's game is going to go to when he wins one of these. He certainly puts in the time. Indeed. And I believe he made a uh, Moscone Cup, did he not? One year? He very well may have. You know, I should remember that. <laughs> There's a place I know to go to find out. <laughs> Google is your friend. Yeah. As Mr. Holman takes game number one. And Brandon still wait. No, Brandon broke dry, right? Yeah. Okay. So he has gotten to the table. Mm -hmm. And again, I realize that neither one of us now, because we're both members of the media, are supposed to take favorites. Yes. But man, how cool would it be for Mitch to make Moscone Cup? Oh, wow. Yeah. JR and I both know Mitch for a long time. Mm -hmm. He's in Air well, he's Vegas now, but he grew up playing on the tour that I ran before the Diamond Tour. I had to call rooms and say, look, I've got this underage player. Can he play in the tournament in your room? And they'd say, yeah, he can play. As soon as he's done, he's got to leave. Mm -hmm. I mean, his dad, his dad came down with him, and he's become an absolute top player. Without a doubt. I mean, he really is a threat to, to win, I mean, uh, former U.S. bar table champion. I mean, he's really a threat to win any event on any table. I'm not sure I like him against Torsten, though. Eight ball. No shot on the one. He wouldn't bank the one, would he? I think he might if the two was laying a little better, but to bank the one and to get shape on the two, I think that's uh, it's a lot to ask. So what safety are you playing here? Uh, well, the easy one is to thin the one and come back using the seven as a blocker, but I like creating some distance and thinning the one on the uh, be the left side, bring the cue ball down table, try and put the one behind the seven and just leaving distance. Now, are you trying to put... Because... You know, in all seriousness, you play a lot better than I do. So when I'm shooting this safety, I'm creating distance, mm -hmm. but I'm not necessarily trying to put the cue ball behind a ball down here. 
I'm hoping when I get down here to be behind a ball. But are you, I mean, and obviously he didn't get behind a ball because he was concentrating more on the one, but are you telling yourself, I'm going to bury him behind the three, or I'm going to bury him behind the ten? It depends on how difficult the actual um, quote-unquote bearing of the cue ball, because, I mean, you're looking at two things. You're looking at the object ball that you're hitting and the cue ball. And on a shot like that, you just want to make sure that you put the one where you where you want to, and the cue ball is secondary as long as you don't scratch. If you get a hook on the three and the ten in that spot, great. If not, as long as you take care of the one, then you're okay. Sometimes when you try and uh, take care of the cue ball too much, you leave the one, you leave the object ball out in the open, and then you, uh, it's a good way to sell out. Yeah. And he, obviously he had that edge. I'm a little surprised he took that on, but I guess if he could see the edge. Hey, he must not like the rail first kick and stick. I don't know if he had enough air. And certainly these two guys have played each other in the past. Mm -hmm. Brandon's a regular at Turning Stone, Torsten's a regular at Turning Stone, and, and any number of other tournaments. I wonder what their record is against each other. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that um, <laughs> this win for Brandon would mean a little bit more as far as the overall record than this win would be for uh, Toasty. Yeah. But this is one loss, one loss side. Yeah, this is win or go home. And Torsten's got an awful lot longer trip to go home. He's got to fly 12 hours or so to get home. Ooh. Kind of, kind of rushed that one just a little bit on his pre-shot. Seemed that way. I think Brandon's got the whole four. Getting around the seven to get back on the five could mm -hmm. be a problem for some people, but I don't see it as a problem for him. And if he clears the seven, he may be concerned about the six ball as well. He's not sure about it. He's taken enough time that I don't think he's got the whole ball. Yeah, boy, it's hard to tell. Obviously not. Swerve time. I don't know about that one. I think a slower swerve, if he had half a ball, might have worked out a little better, but you got to do what you're most comfortable with in that spot. Oh, they hit that shot so well. Yeah, distance and the hook. He's not going to jump this. If he does, I'm going to change his name to Kermit. <laughs> but if he kicks at it, how do you kick safe? He's not kicking to make a ball. And you can't afford to just hope you get safe when you kick against... You either just got to call it in the corner, but you got to make sure you hit it with pace. You don't want to hit this soft. Hit it with pace, you can create some separation if you miss. He called it in the corner. He's going to get distance. That's about the best he can hope for there, <laughs> short of making the ball. Five doesn't clear the ten. Does he make the five in the corner that he's shooting out of right now? Or does he set up for Karim on the ten? Is, it, is that on? Ooh, there's a possibility. Or you just break it out. Or you just to go past it and shoot. Oh, oh wow. He doesn't clip that. He's got the five in the same pocket, and uh, he's home free. 
Now is that a straight line between the 5 and the 10 going to the corner? Because if so, this might be wired. It looks like it. Mm, no, I think the line comes up a little bit to the right of the pocket. Yeah, but he can, he can change that line. <laughs> The 10's not wired cross-side. No. Or is it? He's going to have to throw this. Boy, I'm not even sure he hit that with enough juice to get there. Well, the thing is, he had to throw it so much, the harder he would have hit it, the more short it would have came up. So he almost had to hit it softer to let the throw take as well as once it comes off the rail. And that pace was also going to leave distance. Mm -hmm. Brandon's just got to be happy to be back at the table at this point. If you're going to win this match, you got to get out here. Yeah, for sure. You know, there's not a whole lot stopping you. Make the five, either one rail or two rails into the corner. That's a great shot. Oh, yeah. If he doesn't bump the seven there, I think he might hook himself behind it. Very possible. Here's a tricky shot where you, uh, you want to get as straight as you can on the nine, but you don't want to get absolutely straight either. He did. I think he got just a little bit of angle. Yeah. He could follow I think the down key, to the rail. Yeah, follow down and he's home free. Yeah. Oh, he's drawn. Mm, that, that'll work, but I like the follow because then you're straighter and on the 10 ball, right? Yeah. But personal preference, maybe he likes drawing over following in that spot. 1-1. One, one. I so. I think Veronica has a very promising career in racking and refereeing these matches. You know, I've watched her for three days now, and uh, I haven't seen anything to the contrary of that statement. I, I might be exaggerating a little, but she could be the next Michaela Tab. That's uh, you're aiming high right there. Right, maybe I'm exaggerating know. a lot, but hey. Shoot for the moon and land in the stars? Yeah. Something like that? Never going to get there if you don't try. Yep. I haven't seen any players dispute anything she said. No, I mean, actually, if you really want to nitpick, the only thing I really saw was Omar in the last match. He had a few, uh, he was checked the rack a few times. But, oh, he uh, did? Uh-huh. Yeah, she had to come back up and, and get some balls straight, but, uh, you know, they, they could have been good when she walked away and then something moves, and so... Yeah. Let's just say I, I don't think she had money on his opponent. Right. No. <laughs> that, well, we know Veronica, so we know that one wouldn't be the case. Indeed. He didn't break dry, did he? Nope. Good news is the ball's down. The bad news is... Uh, Whitey is not in the center of the table as uh, we would all like on a 10 ball break. Gives you more options. He doesn't cut the one in, does he? Uh, I don't think. I mean, I better break out a Ginsu knife. Uh, that's a sharp cut. Now, this is the kind of shot that he might bank the one. Looks like he's playing safe. Yeah. To bank this one ball, you, you're really letting, uh, letting the onion loose. Well, but I think getting on the two is not all that difficult. Of course, that's easy to say from here with my 550 Fargo. You have never missed a shot from the chair, sir. Well, I've missed more than enough from the table. <laughs> that was a good shot. 
course, and he'll hit it, but I don't think there's a whole lot he can do with it. A little solid attempt. Yeah. With a good result. It's all about the speed. And this shot's tough on a regulation table. These four and an eighth inch pockets. You got to hit this so clean. You touch the rail on the way down there. It's uh, it's gonna hang. Are you going for the one here? I would personally. What was that you were saying? <laughs> what might happen if you hit the rail going in? Gosh, I hope my crystal ball doesn't run out of battery before the night's out. <laughs> this is a tough rack. How do you get on the four? Might run into it. Mm. I, I, maybe I, I, don't, I think he's got too much uh, angle here to, to draw into that. It's close. Maybe I exaggerate by saying it's a tough rack. It's a tough four. Yeah. After that, it's pretty easy. I'm going to get to see my oh, bank. Oh, well. Bank's open this late? Yeah. Two rails out for the five. Three rails for the five. Is he straight or has he got an angle? I'll okay. say so load up with some inside. I didn't know if he had to bump the six or not. Looks pretty academic from here. Seven and the eight might be the only mini challenge. Those balls in the jaw, and the jaws are so tough to play off of. Mm -hmm. Is he playing between the nine and the ten with the cue ball? I think so. Little top left. Ooh. Yeah. He left more work for himself than I think he should have. And if he's stroking the ball good, he's still out here. Make the eight draw back to the nine. Mm -hmm. But if he's struggling a little bit, which we've seen all these guys do. Especially into this pocket. Well, he's drawing it. He's going off the rail. Yeah. Not a problem at all. I think you just said, silly Americans, don't you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a multiple time world champion. Yes, he eats shots like that for lunch. As Thorsten goes up two to one. All right, so let's say you're in the chair, you're down 2-1, you're playing a guy that you've played before, but, you know, he's gotten the better of you more than you've gotten the better of him. What do you do? What do you tell yourself? Well, I look at the match so far, and I've had a few opportunities. It's not, used to, not, not like he's just breaking and running and keeping me in my chair, so I just have to clean up my mistakes play my best game and know that I'm due for a win. I mean, this guy, I'm, I'm not going to, he's not going to go undefeated against me forever. So this may be the night. Just stay positive, take advantage of my opportunities and play smart. And I think most importantly, you know, when you get down on the shot, 
if you're not at least 85 to 90 percent sure that you're confident you're going to make the shot then look at the safe but if the safe and the shot are equally as difficult then you got to go for the shot because especially playing someone against at this level if you play a half um um, what's the word for it? A donkey. Uh, if you play a half blank safety and you sit down and watch the opponent run out, you're not giving yourself a chance to win. At least if you pull the trigger and go for the shot and you miss it, you're still giving yourself a chance to win the game and the match. So it's all about shot selection and deciding when to duck and when to go for the shot. So I think you just got to stay positive and play this game. He worried about where his three is going to go after this combination. At the angle he's got, hits a little bit of low. I think he'll be able to control the three or use speed. Nice shot. Yeah, it was. All that's left is to get on the floor here. Good. I don't see any other problems. Brandon's already talking to himself in the chair. You know, you got to, and I'm certainly not implying that this is where Brandon is, but, and, and you know, for all we know, he may have beaten Torsten more than he's lost to Torsten. I, I doubt it, but, you know, it, sometimes it's got to, you've just got to be in the chair thinking, what do I got to do? Like, what, I've been playing great. I just got done beating Corey. You know, what, what do I have to do? I mean, he plays in every event. And you got a guy here who took two or three months off the game. Well, here you go. That's what you were saying. Just wait for your opportunity. And then take advantage of it. I mean, I know it's early in the match and all, but down 2-1 looking at this table, you almost got to think that if he doesn't get out here, that his chances are very slim of winning this. Because then it's 3-1 versus 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. Like I was saying in the last match, I'm, I'm, I'm a big follower of you know, confidence and your mental game. And, you, know, you can make a statement here. You got to remind your opponent, miss the five ball against me and see what happens. Yeah, I got a stick in my hand. I can play too. Sure. And, and like you said earlier, you know, when you're playing someone who who has a winning record against you, <coughs> even if you've had a great weekend in a given tournament, it's almost like you're playing with a piano on your back. Because you know the weight is there, you know that you don't have good numbers against a given opponent, so it just makes the cue feel a little heavier in your hand. And that's not something that's just pro players. No, that's any player. That's a league player or a Moscone Club player. And you hit that one confident as uh, the score is tied to two and I have to say I know we're here just strictly to commentate on the action on the table but you have to be confident to wear a pair of sneakers that Brandon <laughs> currently has on those are incredible <laughs> I think Omar in the last match had a shirt of a similar color I didn't know if he was a pool player or construction I yeah. <laughs> holding the stop and go sign at a roadside construction area Nice shoes, Brandon. They look like Nikes. Just do it. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out who the who his sponsor is. He's wearing a patch. Well, his shirt is uh, lights out. Well, yeah. But it's something Q Club. Uh, City Qs is on the bottom of the patch, and at the top, his collar is blocking it. But is it Baltimore City yeah, maybe Qs? Maybe Baltimore. Yeah, because there's a B. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. They uh, they go to Turning Stone. They were sponsored Karen for a time. Okay. Really nice people. Good break. Give them a reward. There we go. Well. Uh -huh. 
I think the seven clears the eight down here. The one ball, I don't know if uh, it's got a pocket in the side. I think the five blocks it. Could you bury the cue behind the six? The six is pretty close to the rail, so you're going to have to have to hit that real sweet to get the hook. Sandoval can do it. Keep the super legends out of this conversation, <laughs> please, sir. And as long as you're not playing Sarah, you're out. <laughs> Indeed. How did he hit that one? Shout out to Mr. Howarden for calling that safety. <laughs> I can see him. He just can't <laughs> make them. I, I can say it. I just can't do it. <laughs> Story of my life. Has he got enough air back there to hit this 1-1 one, one rail? I think he's going to jack up a little bit and spin it. Okay. I mean, that's his uh, only play here, I think. I mean, he's really going to have to spin it to get by the five without contacting it. He's not going to want to hit this too hard because then it takes away the spin off the rail. Kind of like a medium speed hit. There we go. That's it. Only left Brandon's shot. Yeah. And does he have an angle where if he makes the one, he can maybe hit it with some top right and pop the eight ball out? Then the cue ball stays there for the two. Kind of uh, two birds with one stone. That could be. Because unless the seven goes by. I think the seven goes, but it's touch. I mean, if you have a chance to just open that up a little more, I would definitely take it. You don't want to get down to the seven and have to hit it absolutely perfect if you don't have to. And he doesn't hurt anything by hitting the eight here. No. I think he feels confident about the seven going clear. Otherwise, he would have used some inside on that shot. Yeah. I mean, do you think he was trying to hold it, or do you think he was trying to go into the rail and out? He had to have been going into the rail and out, because that's the much safer play. I mean, you don't. there's no reason to hold that, right? Right. And I realize that he didn't want a lot of angle, but he could have moved another foot and been perfectly fine. I mean, he could be practically center table here and still be okay and spin it in, so that was an unfortunate uh, result. That's just lack of concentration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I care for this. I don't think a jump is in play here, is it? Just because of how close the four is to the rail? Well, that how far away the six is from the cue ball. You're talking about small landing area. The cue ball might pop off the table with the jump. But okay. He feels comfortable with this kick, clearing by the six. You're going to pay for mistakes like that. Yep. And he's back to talking. Oh, no, he's talking to somebody on the rail, I think. No, maybe not. And, you know, they all do that. They're all, they're all capable of not taking their eye off of a ball, but taking their mind off of a ball. Well, you, you get rolling a little bit, and you get a little bit of confidence, and then you're like, you take a shot for granted, or you take a shape play for granted. Like, oh, I've got this, no problem. Instead of concentrating, this is exact. I want to hit the rail and come out with plenty of speed so I don't even come close to getting hooked there.
that shot right there from the 6 to the 7 is one that you can sometimes get lazy on and end up right on the 7. Mm -hmm. But he stroked through it to make sure that didn't happen. 7 goes. You know, it's a game like this that really shows the difference in the players, and I don't mean about their skills. I think ball making, safety play, and the like, they're not that far apart, but I think the mental part of the game, the focus, the concentration, I think Thorsten does have the advantage there as he goes up 3-2. to two. I mean, if, if Brandon ends up losing this match, he'll hill, then he's going to look back on that game that he should have had, and instead uh, goes to Toasty. Yeah, and he's got he's to look at it like Omar did in that last match. He can't let that weigh on his mind. Mm -hmm. And as we look across the room, you see him you know, looking up into the rafters. You know he's beating himself up over that shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just got to let it go. It's, the game's over. It's a new game. Maybe Toasty dry breaks here. Maybe he gets another opportunity at the table, and you just have to let it go. It's like, you know, it's like miscues and errors in pool in a match like a, a race to 8 or a race to 15 or whatever. It's like when you make a mistake or an error, you have to let it go and start clean because otherwise you're looking into the crowd, you're looking up. Once you get to the table, you don't have a clean slate. You've got that mental baggage of the last shot you missed or the last positional error you made. You just got to let it go. Clean slate, new game. One, two. Shot on the one. Wow, great break. Three balls. Down here to the rail and back. I like it. No. Decided to hold it. Now I get the pickups. There's a shot where you just uh, slide it in, come middle table a little more than that. I mean, if you're straight in, then you just draw back for the four. If you have a little angle, you have options. Just don't come up short. Well, he let his stroke go there. Okay. Now he's got to work a little harder to get in the four. Mm-hmm. Do a little three-rail action here. Yep, getting it with draw. Wiped its feet on the way in. Good shot. He did. I thought he hit it too hard, but he hit it perfect. Mm -hmm. Brandon's shaking his head in the chair. He's got to be thinking. Think, you know, he's thinking about didn't that. Have to go in. Yeah. And he's probably still thinking about the last game. Well, now he's really going to be hating this. Your opponent bumps the ball and still gets perfect. Mm-hmm. Pacquiao fighting again? Yes, on free TV. Wow. I mean, I guess $100 million just doesn't go as far as it used to. I'm not <laughs> sure why he's still <laughs> willing to take head blows for a check, but... Four two. Get out. fans.
You have millions of fans, Mr. Howerton. I have tens of fans. That's the difference. I'm on the internet. I have millions of detractors. <laughs> All right, 4-2, right? 4-2. Okay. Um, He's probably going to want to duplicate the same break he had the last game. Yeah, successful break. He ran the table. Made the four. And tough on the one. He can see the one. Is the cue ball going to be down here behind the ten? Or is the cue ball going to be up there by the nine and using the six, seven as blockers? I like that because you can aim to hit the nine and then you don't have to have perfect speed control. Mm -hmm. See, shots like this where there's more than one way to do it, it's personal preference, you know. He may like to, to clip the one and bring the cue ball down on the ten ball side of it. Or maybe he likes to play the other way. To hear this, the wrong shot is the shot that you're not comfortable with. I like that. Did he leave the back door open? He left an edge. And really yeah. all he needs is an edge to make the ball here. Yeah, that was, a, that was an overstroke because he had the 6, 7, and 2 as blockers and he just overran it a touch. I think Brandon's got to be thankful that he can even see this ball instead of having to kick uh, one or two rails. Now does he go on the offense or does he play... You know, I think it's easy to come out of the chair and think, I gotta run out of here. He left me a shot, I gotta make the shot. Well, a lot of people think that when you're ahead, you should play a little more cautiously, and when you're behind, you should throw caution to the wind. But, you know, you can only, you know, miss so many semi tough shots before you start, it starts playing on you, and you're like, Okay, well, unless there's absolutely no safety here, I'm going to try and duck because I just can't afford to take a flyer and give up another game. Because it's still in reach here, but if it goes to 5-2, then the hill becomes increasingly steep. I don't know. I think he can bump the 3. He's called the 1. He could make this ball and not necessarily get shaped. Yeah, he has little idea what, what's going to happen with the cue ball if he does, in fact, make the one here. I didn't like the way he delivered that cue at all. Yeah. Does the three go? Is my next question. I believe it does. I believe the three goes past the ten in the bottom corner, or theoretically, I guess, in the opposite side. Power draw here, or is low right going two, three rails to get on the two? Yeah, I think he's coming two rails, maybe three. Not exactly what he had in mind. Good shot. Less than stellar result. From where we are situated, it's tough to see any of the other tables, so we can't really give an update on any of those scores. I didn't hit that ball near no, hard enough. Yeah, he pulled the string on that one. If he makes the two, though, he's bumping the three. I think at this point all he has to do, all he can really do is just afford to 
focus on the two ball 100% here. He tried to do too much with the three ball, and it, I mean, this is his second good opportunity at the table, which is probably one more than usually happens with a toasty opponent. Where he's looking at the angle. Can he follow the two and miss the three, or does he have to draw? At this angle, I don't think he can avoid contacting the three. I mean, rolling. I mean, if he hits low, that's another story entirely. Yeah, you that ball. Yeah. The and three. then that makes the shot that much harder on four and an eighth inch pockets. <laughs> yeah. And this is similar distance wise as the last shot that he tried. Mm -hmm. And he just didn't look comfortable at all with that one. No. Let's watch his free shot and how he strokes this and uh, we'll be able to gauge it. Yeah, I like that much better, not just because he made the ball, but the way he stroked it. He's not happy with it, though. Yeah, we were watching him. There was no, no movement when he, when he hit the ball. I mean, you clip the three and bring the cue ball two rails back and forth and try and put it behind the 7-6. Or maybe try and hit low and slide it one rail behind the 8-6. That looks like what he's trying. He's not. No, he's not trying the three in the corner off the 10. Oh, he's calling a 10. Really? Wow. He better not leave this three. I don't see any way he can play a two-way here if he goes to the ten here. <laughs> this is a short of blown Hail Mary. Short of rolling the cue ball up behind the five. <laughs> oh, wow. And if he does that, I might jump out of this booth and ask for his autograph. That's a <laughs> tremendous shot. On the other hand, he makes this ten ball. He's right in it, and he's got all the confidence in the world. Oh, hit it. Not hard enough? Nope. Wow, and that was right it on was line. It was right on too. line, yep. The good news is he didn't straight sell out. I don't think the three's going in the side. Unless he banks it in the other one. Yeah. I think the bank's on. He's going to have to hit it with some pace or with some low right to shorten it up. Well, then he's got to get on the five. Well, if he hits it with low right, he'll draw over for it. And not bump the three again? Maybe my ideas on banking are a little... Uh, <laughs> Well, you, all right, I've watched you bank positive. balls, so you know more about banking than I do. If he hits it at 100 miles an hour, then you're an expert. He hit it at 96 miles an hour. Great shot, yeah. sir. The bottom right. Yeah. Yep. Wow. <laughs> a broken clock is even right twice a day. Yeah. Your Fargo bumped 20 points just on that. <laughs> Yikes. I think that makes me a 700. <laughs> oh. Did you see that quick stroke? Just, yeah. It was like a two stroke. Play a great shot, and then you have that. Mm -hmm. That wasn't a gimme, but for him it was. And I'm not sure he drew back far enough for the six. He could have made it, but he didn't have to be out from there. Let's clear the seven. Yeah, I don't... just didn't like that shot. I thought he could have done more with it than that. Especially when you're thinking you're not going to get back to the table, and then when you do, that's the time to just let your stroke loose. 
you're playing with the house's money at that point, so there's there's no really reason to to execute in that particular manner. I, just, I think he should have a better shot in this exercise. What is he doing? Just called it the side. I don't know how that ball goes in. I thought he was looking at putting the cue ball behind the 10. But if he's playing a two-way shot, he doesn't want to make the six and put the cue ball there. Certainly not. That was awfully close. Mm -hmm. Okay, I he was going to use the eight as a blocker. Okay. Looks like he got him, right? I, it looks like it. Does Thorsten own a jump cube? Well, he must. What the? What did he call? Did he call the 10? Oh, he's kicking the six and calling the ten. Once again, got to get out here. Absolutely. He did. I see Nick DeLeon across the room with a pool cue put away. Hmm. I know he, uh, he beat a solid player, Chris Byers, out of uh, Portland a couple okay. hours ago. And then I'm not sure who he played after that. Oh, that's just brutal. I don't think the 8 clears the 10, but... Combination looks very makeable. Brandon's probably thinking he double kissed that, at least he could be his dead tree topped on the nine. I think Thorsten knows that Brandon's struggling making balls now, so why is he going to take a shot and leave the seven dead in the hole for him when instead he's just going to leave him a bank and you're going to have to show me that you can shoot your way out of this? Right. I'm not giving you any gifts. You're going to have to earn this game. Which is good recognition on Thorsten's part. He's not going to get him. Well, if you can trade the shot that Torsten had on the seven for this, I think it's a good trade. Mm -hmm. Just going to cinch this ball, right? And then just take your medicine with the 810? Yeah. I mean, you either... You either roll it in, or you stroke it hard enough to come back to the rail and back. 
Advantage Brandon. Mm -hmm. Well, hi, JR. Are you enjoying this match? Mr. Bush, this is more fun than someone's supposed to have on a Saturday night, so I'm having a blast. Thank you. You're most certainly welcome, and thank you for, for uh, allowing me to take a break. My pleasure. <gasps> Brandon. Oh. Kind of crucial at this one, the... Yeah, there's a big difference between 4-3 and 5-2. Little swing. Especially when you had multiple opportunities to win that particular game. And, and Thorsten had some uh, uncharacteristic errors, and you're yeah. not able to capitalize. That's tough. I see it all the time, you know. Uh, you miss a shot like that and go back to your chair. You just see the look on their face yearning to get back to the table, hoping to get back to the table. That's what Brandon looked like a minute for a second there. Yeah, he's got to be thinking right about now, you know, I'm playing a world-class player, a world champion, and he's he's struggling to get out on me, but yet when I'm at the table and I have a shot that I'd bet my life on making and I don't make it, it's got to play on your mind a little bit. Uh -huh. And coming back from 5-2, it's... Uh, it's a tall order. Not saying it can't be done, but uh, I think Thorsten's level is going to go up from here. I, I don't see him continuing to make uh, the errors that he's made so far. Well, if there's any ex you know, justification for errors, it would only be because maybe due to a little bit of exhaustion from playing all day. But you might be right. You might be kind of like... You know, a miss like that from Brandon can definitely put wind in his sails. It's definitely been a grueling gauntlet here uh, these past days. You know. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it takes a lot of stamina to play these events. I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna go. Let you go back with uh, Mike. Okay, sir. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Thank you. It was fun. <laughs> Um, Bud Light Lime would be great. Thanks. Okay, much better. Feel better, sir? I do. Good. Good air. So we're 6 2 now? Uh, we are 5 2. And. Uh, Thorsten had a semi-makeable shot on the one that he hung, and Brandon took the table. Okay. I got ahead of myself, though. Yeah, don't be such a Thorsten fanboy. He's not at six <laughs> yet, sir. If I'm, if I'm struggling, and you know me, I'm more of a bar box player, but if I'm struggling, I don't even want this two ball on a bar box. <laughs> I'm leaving myself as easy as I can every time. Mm -hmm. well, this four ball is going to be an adventure. You could just roll up a few inches and then uh, kick it out and stick him on the seven ball if he doesn't have an angle to open it up. You can't tell if he's dead straight in or he has a slight angle or not. It almost looks like he's got an angle going the other direction. He wouldn't think of something crazy like following and trying to put the four in the opposite corner. Or following the top right, coming around two rails and, and opening those up, running into those. Oh, wow. That takes the safety out of play. I think he's treetopped with the 10. If he had a clear path of the cue ball, 
he could hit the four ball and stick it on the seven, but I don't know. I don't think he has that shot, that option now being tree top. He's calling the bank. But if you're going to play this to try to make it and have shape on the six, you're selling out if you miss it. That you are. Yeah, he was trying to stick it on the seven. That's triple tough when uh, you can't see the whole cue ball. Sounded like a monsoon was going off in my ear there. <laughs> so sorry I got bumped into by a patron. Ah. Well, you make the four, you're supposed to be out. Wow, no doubt there. That wasn't a, a walk in the park shot. No, he's got to load up with inside. Put this in the side. And clear the eight. Good shot. Does he want to draw this straight back and come across the line of the eight? No, absolutely not. I would do top left, come two rails and out. If he draws, he's going right into the line of the eight ball. I'm right. not a fan of that. He's got a slight angle, so top left, come two rails out. Doesn't have a lot of angle. I mean, oh, he's got enough, I think. Oh, he's drawing. Okay. Personal preference. Mm. Oh, he drew the other way. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Mm. When you can make any shot on the table, you, you'll take that eight ball. Yep. And now he can either go two and come between the nine and the ten, or one and just come straight back. I think he goes between the nine and the rail here. It's the more natural shot. Just like in the video I watched once. Yeah. And with that, the score is six to two. See, I knew it was six Holman. to two. I just got a little ahead of myself. My goodness, life holds no mysteries for you, Mr. Howerton. Oh, trust me, it does. Torsten Holman over Brandon Schuff. Brandon's seeing his opportunities slipping away quickly. And when he does get at the table, he's faced with this. He's not pleased. And you know, you're, you're beating yourself up thinking, you know, I deserve this. You know, so to a degree, you're talking yourself out of the shot or, or the match. But doesn't it always seem like 
you know, you miss a couple of balls, you're starting to lose the match, and then things just start rolling your opponent's way. Yes, I've experienced that once or 50 times <laughs> in my uh, full career. You haven't lost 50 matches in your life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, folks, I, I, I send Mr. Howard in checks weekly to say nice things about me. Yeah. Money well spent. But yeah, you, I mean, if your brand is there, you've got to look at it like, okay, it's 6-2, but it just as easily could have been could be 4-4 right now if I took advantage of my opportunities. It definitely plays on your mind. You just gotta, like I said, you just, your mental, your state of mind, you just have to forget, you have to have a short memory in this game. And those, I think the best players have that capability, and, and the ones that struggle are the ones that carry their mistakes and their errors with them into the remainder of the set and it's it just hinders your own success honestly I mean I know it's tough to be in that spot you feel like you should be uh, ahead in a match and you're behind and uh, it's due to your own tailings it's tough Well, it looks like he's got to go one rail. That 8-9 down there is going to be a little bit difficult. Yeah, something's going to have to be done to that in order to uh, to get out. The seven's in the neighborhood as far as uh, possible breakout. But we're a long way from that right now. Uh, Brandon's just hoping to make a good hit on the one here and not sell out. Yeah, because if he goes one rail, the one's going to stay there. Ooh, maybe he can see it. Nice. Trying to make a bad situation worse. And the one and put the cue ball. Yeah. Now Brandon's got to be worried about a three foul. Mm -hmm. Veronica might want to come out for this one. Yep. Now does he does Toasty have to call her out to watch it or is she just racking, or is she the on-site rep? That is a fantastic question that I unfortunately do not know the answer to. Well, she's not getting out of the chair, so I'm assuming he has to call her. Yeah, I think Toasty's going on the honor system here. Uh-oh. He's on, too. And honestly, that's a ball he's supposed to hit. Took away the one rail. Looks like a two railer to me, right? Can he? The four ten aren't in the way for that. Yeah, it's not. I think he's got it. I don't want to be shooting to hit this ball to win the game. Yeah, he shoots it. Uh. <laughs> Right about where the, uh, I don't know if we can catch us on the camera, but the West State Billiards uh, sticker. Okay. Income two rails. Uh, I mean, it's not an easy shot, but I don't really see any other options. I think that's what he's looking at right now. Is he playing that two rail kick system where you make the line between the cue, cue ball and the ball you're trying to hit and then run the line into the, the opposite corner? And then carry that angle over. You lost me at the word too. I, okay. I, I, I wish I had systems, but uh, I'm kind of a. Oh. Oh man. All right. 
And that puts the count at 7-2 seven, two seven, two. in favor of Pullman. And I always think losing a shot to a, or losing a game to a three foul, it kind of costs you extra because you just... You know, Torsten's just taken all the... all the air out of Brandon's game. I wonder what the crowd was going on about. It looked like Pacquiao got knocked down. This has to be an old fight. This can't be now. No, it is now. He's, uh, I can't believe he's, uh, he's fighting. I think earlier today he was at Denny's eating the, uh, is it the early bird special for 55 <laughs> and over? I'm not sure. All right, last time we get to see Torsten break this match. Four ball, seven ball. That's a great break. Shot on the one and a two tied up. Yeah. It goes inside though, doesn't it? It does have a pocket in the side. Yeah, he can get his cue ball over here near the 10. Oh, he's looking at... Is he looking at getting over by the other West State logo? Hmm. Between the 5-6? I think he's looking to get over here between the 3-6. Did he get too far? No, I think he's, he's good. good. Yep. Any fans of Mr. Chef might want to uh, fire up the jukebox and play the Rocky theme. It's going to be. He's going to need it. Serious comeback. I don't think it matters now. Yeah. Everything's in the open. Is there any worse feeling? Um, only if you're Thorsten and you suffer a skid in the next four shots. <laughs> he just has to make sure he doesn't hook himself on the eight. Just playing nice and simple. Put the eight in the side after this. I think so. Ooh. Ooh. Brandon can't believe it. <laughs> that music isn't going to help him now. <laughs> Thorsten fans coming out and force the jukebox. <laughs> you know, I thought Thorsten was supposed to win the match in the beginning just based on history, but I don't think he was supposed to win it 8-2. I agree. And Thorsten Holman with a convincing 8-2 victory over Brandon Schuff. I don't know who they're going to have on here next. I think the fans in the audience are hoping it's not us. Do you know who's coming up next? Well, 
Oh. Okay, so... So are they going to... Is it going to be offline for the next hour? Okay. Okay, Geraldine says that um, we may be an hour before the next match. Would you like to get... play a race date, Mr. Howardson? No. <laughs> I, you know, I would, but I left my cue at home. Damn. It's all right. You can shoot with my BK, too. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to get Dennis Orcoyo and... Oh, no. Oh, wow. Thorsten and Bobby Emmons. Emmons. Ooh. Is Bobby the last local player in this? Unless Nick is uh, still in. I don't know. I haven't seen the bracket. He's in the house right now, but I don't know if he's still in. Okay. And you know, Bobby's nursing an injury right now. <coughs> yes, he was recently in the hospital. A motorcycle accident. So, But as he's walking in front of us, he seems to be in reasonably good health. But now this is going to be... <laughs> A real contrast of styles. Yeah. Next up we have Bobby Emmons and Torsten. Okay. That's Homan. Is it Homan? Yes. Yeah. Torsten. He's from Germany, right? Yes. Okay. They call him the Ice Man. They do? Oh, the Hitman. The Hitman, the hit man, yeah. Right. The Something Man. He rolls in a Porsche, not a Volkswagen, I hear. For anyone who's not familiar with Bobby Emmons' game, he has never seen a shot he didn't like. And he does not get paid by the hour. No. Bobby might wish there was a shot clock on this, like, chess, because... In the time that Torsten takes to look at a shot, Bobby might run out of rack. Indeed, and uh, for you golf fans out there, it's not Sunday yet, but he is wearing tiger red. Oh, with matching shoes. Yes. I'm not sure if he's unaware that the finals aren't until Sunday, but there's nothing wrong with getting an early start on a winning attitude. There you go. It'll be interesting to see if Bobby's approach changes... Torsten's approach to the table? I would say no. Um, dance with the girl that brought you. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't think anything Bobby is going to do or could do is going to change a uh, woman's approach. 